let's talk about the future. What is the future? So we've talked about some of this before. The context, I would like to have, and this isn't in the build right now, but I would like to have multiple uh, context to support modular development. What that means is, is that you can create, let's say you're building a healthcare app and you're worried about just admissions, okay? You're not looking at existing people who have existing coverage. You're not looking about changing coverage or changing insurance. You just want to know who they are, and that's it. You have the API to expose to say, hey, do you know who this person is based on these credentials? But your app is really responsible for taking their first name, last name, date of birth, next of kin, you know, if they're a kid, who their parent or guardian is, taking all that information, why they're seeing them today, the past medical history, right? And that's your app. It has all your models and your services and it supports the HIPAA, right? It's all there. Anybody and their mom could take that RoboLegs app, put it in their RoboLegs app, and it would coexist just fine. Right? They could even just have like one method they call the GUI. They would never actually touch the context, you know, event-based system, right? And if you're using the, the style of Lua 5.2 modules, then it would never populate in global, you never have the name collisions, you'd be good to go, right? For enterprise scale and applications, you gotta have that. And so I'm working on a way to figure that out. Um, it's, the, the challenge really is about the class definitions, which we'll get to. So context is the event bus. I had that in an earlier build more pain than it was worth for smaller scale applications. And because I, I want to take the API for a test drive on multiple places to make sure I work all the kinks out, I feel good about its implementation in Lua, which is completely different than ActionScript and JavaScript. Um, don't like it. <laughs> I liked Runtime. Runtime works great. It's fast. It's native. So, but it's not going to work. You know, long term, you got to have context as an option and follow the same API structure and documentation that RoboLegs had, right? And that design choice that Sean made and Till made, and you know, they all made, I agree with. Actor is the base class, right? This is where the context is injected. We'll get to that. I had that as well, but the base classes are based on global classes, not local, you know, the 5.1 model, not 5.2. So I gotta figure that out as well. I have a build, but it needs some work. Dependency injection. So because Lua is a runtime language, I'm starting to get away from the pre-compiler. Pre-compilers could work if you have an existing Lua dependency setup. So for example, if you were the type of firm, company, agency that's comfortable with something like CoffeeScript, for example, where we don't write JavaScript here, we write in CoffeeScript. Well, if you know, CoffeeScript doesn't run in the browser. Now, in later versions of Chrome and Firefox, you can have source maps, but at the end of the day, what you're compiling down to is JavaScript, right? So it's the same with Lua. You're fine with some form of pre-compiler that you have to run via a build script, via a compiler script, via a deploy script, whether it's Maven, Ant, Make, whatever, right? Somebody somewhere is gonna take your code and munge it and export it to something completely different. If it's just a DI pre-compiler, it's not really that different, is it, right? The challenge is, is that because Lua is dynamic, what we generate might not be accurate. So I'm I'm not really liking the pre-compiler stuff anymore. I'm liking the fact that we could do annotations, right? The normal um, inject, but we'd have it as a comment instead. So it'd be dash dash inject, right? And then um, we would do runtime injection. So what that means is, is that when we instantiate your model classes, we would actually look through those comments, parse your class out in Lua, Right, which already, there's already a lot of DI frameworks in Lua that do this, and provide the dependencies for you. Right, so we could do a post inject. We could even do constructor injection, kind of, because we haven't instantiated the class yet. Right, it's just a local module. Uh, that was one problem that ActionScript three had was constructor injection. Or Java people like we don't have those kind of problems, so we could do that as well. Could do a lot of cool things with Lua runtime injection. Haven't figured it out. <laughs> More work. Commands. Um, we're missing async command. It's a pretty big deal. There's a lot of asynchronous calls in, in Lua. Almost every service is asynchronous. And um, even though you have control over the garbage collector, you're going to get eaten by mark and sweep if you don't know what you're doing. So it's it's definitely something that's got to be in there before 1.0 release. It's got to be part of the examples. And I think that async command is definitely um, a need to, need to have. Forking. Same with async command, really hard, really strange, and there are some good use cases for it. But because of the way mark and sweep works, and you wanna make sure your references are there, 
I don't know if it's worth it. We'll see. Modules. We've already talked about context as modules. But this is a bigger problem. This is how Jesse Warden likes to do little classes. So I like putting my classes on global because it reminds me of Flash 6, 7, whatever, both of them. We're putting it on global, right? So regardless of what Swift you loaded or where you were running from, um, at the end of the day, your classes were on global, right? And you could access them up there. Um, Action 3 had actually domains where it would load it into and they have security restrictions on those domains talking. Lou doesn't have that. Lou is like, look, they're all on global. You can access them. What this allows is that as soon as, even though somebody has to, you know, require, it's not always required, right? Is if the class is already defined, the required is nothing. It's already redefined in global. They're not going to redefine it again, right? So you can essentiate classes without having to do the full package path. Um, the problem with that is twofold. Number one, if you are using third-party libraries, those classes will stop yours or not. And that's a problem. Number two is that 5.2 assumes that you're not in the global scope. So suddenly you're polluting the global scope with your classes and assuming no one else wants to be there either. The other problem with that is that it doesn't allow coexistence of different robot legs modules on larger applications. Now Lua, from my test, doesn't have a lot of problems scaling. It's a, it's a pretty fast language based on the current implementation of current SDK, which implies that a lot of code can coexist, which implies that putting things in global is not the right way to scale. It's also not the future. You can say what you want about 5.1 five, and the current implementation Corona, but the community has spoken in the greater Lua community. Everyone wants to go to local. It's the exact same thing that people do right now in JavaScript. They do the closures. And the closures, they you know don't define anything on window. They use a closure in the function in JavaScript. You can get a class reference to it. It's just known that most people you know throw it on window, unless you're using something like require or upnote, right? ECMA 6 is going to solve this, but at the end of the day, it's still right now to local modules, right? So, you know, that's where Lou is, Lou is basically gone already. So we need to find a way to support what is your environment. Now, Lua 5.1 had a way to change what global environment or classes you're dealing with, right? I don't have support for that yet. <laughs> what uh, What is your class environment or your application domain? Like, if you're familiar with ActionScript 3, where are your class is going to exist? What class domain am I dealing with in Lua? There are no mechanisms for that stuff at all. Um, and this gets really fuzzy with garbage collection. Like, okay, where are my class domains existing? Who's responsible for that? How do I clean that up? So um, it might be simpler than this, but you know, I just, I, I've been looking at uh, a lot of the DI stuff and how people are doing classes and what's coming down the pipe for both JavaScript and Lua. And it just seems like I need to follow the best practice, right? So we need to figure out how to support that. Right now it's doing a global because it's quick, get her done, pragmatic, but it's definitely not the future. And the concern is, is that if you code to an API that's even pre 1.0 release, you're gonna have some pain if you code you know, 50 classes this way, right? At the end of the day, it could just be a find and replace and all your modules are defined with a local class instead of just class equals table, right? It could be that simple. But as a framework, you know, I didn't make the framework, but I'm still important. I'm still responsible for making sure that pain's not gone. So that's coming in the future. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out.